Hey! How is everybody? Good. Good. Awesome. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Great, great, great. Okay, so um, I know that Jose and Martha are going to be joining about five minutes or so late, but we can go ahead and get started if you guys are ready. Oh, Jose, okay, you surprised me. You're there. <laughs> can you hear me, Jose? Hey guys, sorry. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Can you hear awesome. Me? Yep. Awesome, awesome, awesome. I thought I saw Heather. Is Heather? I'm here. Now? I don't know why my camera's not showing. <laughs> no problem. No problem at all. Okay. All right. Great. Well, everybody except for Martha's on. I know she'll be on in a few. Martha's here. Oh, <laughs> you guys keep surprising me. Okay, this is great news. <laughs> So, so we have two people. Um, Cecilia is here. She's a new project manager. And we have Natalia, who's here, who's another project manager. So um, first thing we wanted to start uh, with is just introductions. I know most of you already know each other, have worked with each other, but still, it'll be helpful to just go around, um, give your name, what you usually do for include, and then something that makes you happy. <laughs> so um maybe one of the the oldies do you want to start jose sure i could start yeah um hi my name is jose lopez i do ui ux design for include and something that makes me happy probably something i'd make brie happy too is being done with finals fortunately we're not almost almost when is it when are they done you guys um, are graduating so yeah human factor stuff the capsule is kind of crazy for everyone so <laughs> yeah, yeah i believe it but it, it gets easier i promise you i survived so so will you living, <laughs> living testament <laughs> awesome awesome okay um brie you want to go yeah totally um i'm brie i also do ui ux design for include and something that makes me happy is <laughs> unlikely animal friendships <laughs> Really? Okay. A chicken and like a dog are like best friends, or like a goat, like a friend with a cat or something. <laughs> I could see that. That would make me happy too. <laughs> awesome. Um, next person I see is Cecilia. So do you want to go ahead? Awesome. So I'm Cecilia. I'm the new project manager, and something that makes me happy is running. Mm. Oh yeah. You didn't you just finish like a marathon world trip something <laughs> something like that yeah i'm an ultra marathon <laughs> runner and so actually this today was the, my i did a 50k two years ago today i was just reminded by facebook <laughs> oh wow Whew. okay that's cool <laughs> <laughs> and you survived so this makes finals seem so much easier right something like that yeah <laughs> <laughs> awesome okay natalia Hi, I'm Natalia. I'm a project manager too. Um, something that makes me happy is that the flowers are starting to come out. So it's not just so gray in Boston. Thank God. Yeah, <laughs> this is true. Yeah, I saw a flower the other day too. It was really fascinating. Yeah. So, There's <laughs> colors. I know. A ray of hope. I'm so happy. <laughs> okay, um, Martha? Um, I'm Martha Connors and I'm a project manager. Have been since November. And uh, what makes me happy, sort of like flowers, is days that are not gray like today or yesterday. Uh, I'm ready for the sun to come out. Basically. Yeah, yeah, same. Definitely feel you on that one. <laughs> okay, um, Heather? Sorry you can't see me. Um, <laughs> my name's Heather, and I do UI UX design. And something that makes me happy is sailing. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, wow. Oh, okay. I've never, I don't think I've sailed before, but I know I have bad motion sickness, so I feel like it wouldn't work <laughs> out <know>. well. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right, nice. I know um, Junior couldn't be online, but Junior is another designer. Um, really, really amazing. Uh, he does UI UX. He also graduated from Tufts. And um, then another person who's a designer is um, Marie. Uh, she's new on the team as well. And um, she's gonna be doing UI UX design. Okay, so I'll probably just do the same thing with them uh, some other time this week or next week. But you all know me, I'm Kristen. You're, um, 
a very, very grateful leader. <laughs> really love you guys. You guys have definitely made this dream come true. And every day I'm amazed by the equally as amazing things that you guys do. Um, so basically today, I just wanted to go over kind of some changes that have taken place with the process of design and um, client interaction. So first thing I'm going to do is um, share my screen. So well, actually, I guess I'll just explain first so as opposed to before the um, team that that's been working with me for a while knows that the projects have been kind of one level and they're priced based on um, the number of pages that a client has now we're kind of offering two levels of websites so you could either have a tier one which includes one round of revision and um, just email communication that's it or you can have a tier two, which includes two rounds of design revisions and then phone or online conference um, communication. So the reason why I did that is because we are starting to get a, a big range of customers. So we have the startups who are a little bit more strapped and they don't want to spend as much money. Um, and then we have the, the smaller, more established businesses who are still interested in getting a little bit more customization in their site. So wanted to give um, a little bit more variety while still making sure that you guys are compensated fairly for extra time that you put in. Um, so there's, like I said, the two tier packages. And what's gonna happen is whenever I get a new project request, I'm gonna go and either, depending on who's already on a project or who has availability, go and pitch it. And um, you'll be able to look up online, which I'll show you in a minute, how much you'd make for that project based on how many pages it is and which tier it is, and you can decide to accept. Um, each project, again, will have a project manager and then a project designer. And all of the projects, because Heather and Martha can probably tell you Squarespace is the devil, um, I'm going to try to keep all projects from now on, uh, all websites at least, in Wix. And that way, um, it's pretty standard. And if project managers and designers both can get an idea of how Wix works, everyone's on the same page, and there's no question as to what's uh, functionally possible. OK? All right. Awesome. So I'm going to share my screen and um, show you guys. Doot, doot, doot. OK. Let me know when you can see. Oops. Okay. Okay. All right. Great. So you should be able to see about now. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Great. So let me um, just make this thing bigger if possible. All right. Awesome. So I have a um, Google Drive, which I'll invite everyone to. And basically it just has, um, it's the, in, the include product development team folder. And I have a folder for designers slash developers and then a folder for project managers. And inside of both of them, um, I'll show you designer for right now, is uh, the pricing, AKA how much you would make for different projects. And then also the protocol, for design so for instance I'll just take you through and this so this this document is in both folders for project managers and project um, designers so basically I take you through the general process and how every website will begin is the client the client will be contacted by the project manager and you'll schedule project manager you'll schedule a, a kickoff meeting with them so I know um, in the past, sometimes uh, clients can be kind of uh, assertive in how long they want to meet and how often. So trying to be as uh, clear and um, clear with expectations as possible in the beginning is really good as a project manager. So every the kickoff meeting should be about 30 minutes, um, but definitely less than an hour. Uh, in, in this document, I talk about what questions you should go through, but the main purpose of the kickoff meeting is to get an idea of what the content is that they're expecting to have on their site, and then the look and feel. 
So one thing um, that I would like designers to do before the client and project manager kickoff meeting is to present three, up to three websites that are kind of an example of what their website could look like. So I'll just show you kind of how that would go. So let's say we're designing a website for a restaurant. Maybe you would look at different, you the designer and, and project manager if you were up to it, could look at different websites that look good and might fit with the client's expectations. So this is one. Here's another one. And then here's another one for restaurant. So you would send links to all three of these to the client before the meeting and ask them, okay, what do you like about, uh, just come prepared at the meeting with what you like, what you don't like, and what kind of um, look and feel and color scheme you're anticipating. Okay. Um, all right. After uh, you do all of that, the next thing that you would do is pretty much create a version of just one version of the home page and then one sub page. So that could be the home page and then the about page. And the goal of this is to, because we're trying to keep our prices really affordable, trying to make sure that you all are compensated fairly for your time, we want to make sure you're not starting over each time you design something. So you should be going into Wix and finding a template that looks as much like a website that they said they preferred. And then you can work from there. Okay. So I won't go into too much detail on the process, but the process again is you provide a, a version of the home page and the sub page. You do up to two rounds of revision based on which tier they got, either a one round of revision tier or a two round of revision tier. And then from there, you would use whatever template you made for the sub page to create the remaining pages. And again, we want to make sure that, you know, you can change things like the color, the font, maybe background images, things like that. But overall layout, you want to keep it as close to the Wix template as possible. Just, and the reason for this again is because I know I've found that when we go too far in doing design um, from scratch, it takes a lot more time and you know I don't know if it's fair to you guys if the price isn't going to change. So uh, just keeping that in mind, okay? All right, and then you guys, again, I'll give everyone access to this so you can look through this, but this basically gives you an idea of what each step is in the process and um, what you're expected to do for each part as the project manager and then again as the project designer. Okay, any questions on that part so far? No. Nope. nope. Okay, everybody's good. Awesome. All right. So again, in the, in the, um, oops, where am I? Okay. In the, um, the Google Drive, again, you'll find this protocol that kind of goes through everything in detail. You'll also find the payment for each thing. And how it'll work is uh, for payment, you will invoice me when you've completed a milestone. And basically each project has two milestones. You'll have, you submitted the home page and sub page for the first time to the client and you'll invoice me half of what you're supposed to make for the total project. And then you get paid the second half right after the website launches. Okay, makes sense? Okay, all right, awesome. So I'm just gonna take you through Asana really quickly. So Asana is the tool that um, we're using for uh, management of the project. So the person who'd really be in charge of making sure that the Asana is up to date is the project manager. So right after you have the, this is for, for instance, a tier two 10 page website. I have templates created already in Asana. Um, I'm gonna, I have to finish the other two templates, but I have templates already for five page website and then the 10 page website. So you, when you first start a new project, depending on what website it is, you would just duplicate this project by going over here to copy project. 
and then you'd rename it depending on what the name of the, the website is or the client is. Okay. As soon as you finish, um, as soon as you finish a task, project managers, you would then just click um, the checkbox so that it's clear that it's finished. Okay. All right. And this, um, this project management uh, tool is really great because it shows you designers every step that you need to take and and even includes uh, points where you need to check in with the project manager. So after each time you've created a design, it'll always go to the project manager before it go before um, the project manager sends it to the client. Okay. All right. Um, and then the other thing is I know communication sometimes can get very crowded in email and things can definitely get lost. So I've created a, a group um, Slack account, which basically allows you to communicate through this one place, depending on the project. So for each project, project manager, you would just create a new channel for that. So you would just say, create a channel and it would be the name of the project. And then what happens there is as you can see, I'm in the mass budget project. I would go and invite people to that channel, and then we could talk to each other through that. And it'll send you uh, an email whenever people write, or you can request that it just stays in here. But at least the great thing is every line of communication you have about a project will all be in one place instead of getting lost in email. Okay? That's great. Okay, uh, everybody, does that make sense? It does, Kristen, I have a question. Yeah, sure. I was, I was looking at both Sana and Slack today and thinking about where we could share documents, if we could share documents using either of them. For instance, the change request form comes back from the client. And mm. right now, I'm saving it on my computer, right, in the right. folder. But I could be, Asana allows you to write in that milestone uh, attach a document right so we could be using it as a document management tool at the same time as a project management tool I'm yeah sure. that's a great idea actually yeah so um great 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 point so you're talking about inside of asana so for instance um after you let me see okay after you get revisions back from the right. client let's say we're on this one yep you would be at the second round, oops, there's two those, uh, second round of revisions for the home page and sub page. And what you would do is then you could upload, where, uh, where is it? Oh, I think it's over to the right. Yeah, there we yeah. go. You can attach from the computer the change request form, which I can explain in a minute. Great idea, awesome. And then I believe that um, because this is synced, to Asana, I mean, uh, Asana is synced to Slack. You can also write comments right on Asana if you want to mm. as well. So in here, and then it'll show up in here on Slack. So either way is fine, just as long as, you know, it's, it's attached to a project and isn't just random. Okay, all right. Awesome. Um, let me see what else. Do I have. Okay, so um, just to explain what happens in terms of revisions. So for designers, once you uh, submit the home page to the, well, actually, I'll I'll show you actually Wix first. Sorry about that. Sorry to be confusing. <laughs> but um, I'm just gonna do a quick tutorial of Wix now, just so everybody kind of understands how that works. I know most of you um, who've worked with me for a while already know how Wix works, but just want to show you a new process that'll make it a lot easier to do design, okay? All right. So again, remember before you actually have a client kickoff meeting, you're going to show them up to three different websites and get their feedback on what they like and don't like. So let's say again, it's for a restaurant and the client really likes this type of font. They like that it's very um, bold, it's all caps, it's very image heavy, and then it makes it very easy where um, their navigation is really simple. Okay, so let's say that that's the thing they like. So when you go into Wix, you would see, this is the first thing you would see, actually. 
Okay. So first thing you'd see when you log in is just the current sites that we have. But what you would do to create a new one is you click that plus. Because we're doing restaurants, we'll go to restaurants. Okay. And then you can look through the different templates that are already made and figure out, you know, what is really close to what the client wanted already. So let's say they wanted something very image heavy. They wanted it to be kind of bold in terms of text. Maybe we go with the bread shop. So let's say you've explored and now you're ready to choose one. So you can say edit this one. Okay. And it'll take a minute for dramatic effect. Or two minutes for extra dramatic effect. <laughs> okay, here we go. Perfect. So what I really want everyone to focus on is the fact that, you know, Wix is really good at creating very, very nice templates that you can actually alter so that you wouldn't even be able to tell it was a Wix template in the beginning. So as opposed to before, where I think some designers were starting from scratch to do things, which is awesome because you're all amazingly talented. Um, definitely start from a template, and this way it's already mobily optimized, so you won't have to do too much changing. Um, in addition <clears throat> to kind of getting a feel for what the client wants, what you can do is focus on three things when you're working on a client's design. You can change the background colors, um, the background images, you can change the font type, and then you can um, create page, uh, sub-page templates. So those are the three things that really I want everyone to focus on when they're designing. So instead of working on how should this be laid out, you know, should I have a box coming out of here, should I have this thing change, these shapes change, really keep it as simple as possible. So for instance, let's say we want to change um, the, the image, that's one thing that you can do that will really make it more personalized to the client. So let's just randomly just choose one. Or I'll do this because it's actually food. Okay, let's say that they sell, I don't even know what that is. So let's, let's go with this pizza. I know what pizza is. <laughs> um, okay. So there we go, easy, just changing the background images. Um, if you wanted to, for instance, um, change the color, that's another thing that would be good to do for a client is just change the color so that it fits with their branding. So what you do is over here on the left, you see where it has the square and then it says background. You go to color. Once this little pop-up appears, you would change, you would click change because this is the current color palette. Okay, so let's say that their colors are actually green and blue. They already have a great color palette that's green and blue here. So you can click that and it'll change it for you. And then that way you've already changed this template so it's a little bit more personalized and you haven't even done that much, you know, you haven't spent that much time. Additionally, if they didn't have a color palette that actually fit with the client, you could change right here. Let's say they wanted the header um, to be like red or so. You could do that. Oops, I did not change it. Here we go. I'm not sure why that didn't change, but um, in a perfect world, it would. <laughs> Let me see. Okay, but you get my point though. You can go in and change the, the color palette and then what you would do is just click done and it would save that for you. Okay, and then lastly, the, oh, here we go. So you see how it changed it from white to blue and now that'll be carried through the entire site. And um, lastly, another thing that you can do, for instance, is let's say that they already have a, a good um, branding document or some type of branding material. You can change um, the text throughout. 
so that all small headings, all titles, all quotes, all whatever, are um, the, whatever font you want it to be, and that's carried throughout. So let's say that we want, excuse me, to change the font for small headings everywhere. We would double click on the small heading, go to edit the text, and then you can change the font. So let's say we wanna change it to uh, Chelsea Market. So it should be like that everywhere. We change it to Chelsea Market and then say save theme. And as you can see, it says your text theme will be updated and it'll change everywhere. So we can say save, okay? And if you look, oh, somebody's excited. And then if you look, it's changed that everywhere we go. So about change to that font, gluten-free change to that font, okay? All right, awesome. And then um, the last thing was just subpages. Give me one second. So it looks like it's loading. Okay, so just the, the last thing I wanted to say is that Wix is really good at creating um, pages for you. So for instance, let's go to About. They already have a pretty nice template that can be used for sub pages. So you see they have the two images and then they have uh, res uh, the respective text to the right of it or to the left of it. Instead of going and creating really complex and unique sub pages for every single sub page, I would say you, you would present maybe this design to the, to the client and then you would use some variation of this sub page uh, template for every additional sub page. And that way, all that you would have to do then is add content, like the, you would change the pictures. If this was the about page versus the, um, I don't know, if they had a services page, it would still be the same layout, same type of content, but you would change the pictures and you would change the text. And again, the real goal behind this is we want to make sure that our clients have beautiful designs, that they really speak to the culture and mission of their organization, but we're trying to keep it as simple to create as possible. Because the main goal besides delivering a top quality product, of course, is to make sure that it's turned around very quickly, quickly and without too much complication on your part, okay? And the great thing about keeping the layout very similar to what Wix has already created is when you go into the mobile view, it's pretty much already done for you. So you don't have to worry about, you know, you, maybe you would move this photo up so that it's above this text or something like that. But the, the, for the most part, it's not too complicated for you to make sure that it looks nice on mobile view too. Okay. All right. So let's say we uh, publish this site. So you would click, click publish. You'd save. Okay. All right. So now what happens is when we go back to Wix, so let's say we exit out of this, oops. We can go to My Sites. And this site is now there. So you see I named it Team Test and it's actually there. So now as the designer, when you're ready to show it to the project manager, you would click get feedback and it'll create for you a link. So this link doesn't have the Wix name in it, which is great. And um, it doesn't have the ads either when you uh, go to view the site. So now we can go put that link in. Okay, and it'll take you to a draft version of that website. All right, 
So this is what you would show to not only the project manager, but project manager, when you're ready to um, show it to the client, you would give them that same link. So it shouldn't say Wix's name in it or anything. It should just be a random URL that they can go and look. And the great thing about this is, so project managers, if you want, um, you can actually add comments directly on the page for the designer. So you can either provide, I think this is a really cool tool, you can either provide the, the comments for the designer, let's say that the client actually said they wanted the colors to be green and blue, uh, green and black instead of blue and black. You could go and drag this maybe to the menu, just say uh, color scheme be green instead of blue. Okay, and then when the designer goes back into it, they'll be able to go and look at this comment and they can mark it as done if they've uh, changed, once they've changed it. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right, and then um, only thing is uh, designer, well, I guess before you would hand it off to the client, you'd make sure that you marked everything as done and deleted it so that no, none of those little dots are there when the client goes in and checks everything out, okay? All right, and then this can also, you can also tell the clients that they're able to view the website mobile, uh, the mobile draft of the website too using this link, which is great, okay? So, so far, I, we haven't been using, um, the add comment feature for design or for clients. And I don't know if Martha or anyone else has feedback on that, but I am um, reason why I haven't really opened up that option is because I want to make sure clients give their feedback all at one time in one place yeah. versus, you know, someone could definitely add five comments today and then later on say, Oh, my team had five more comments and then just put it on there. So it'd be hard to keep track of revision number. So I would say we should keep it to what happens now is uh, the once the project manager sends out this link, they would also send out to the client a project uh, or change request form. And on that change request form, which is just a Word document, the client would say, oh, on the home page, I want one, two, three, four changes made. On the about page, I want these changes made. And once they send that document to you, that is considered one round of revision, okay? So any additional comments after that is included in the next round if they get more than one round, okay? Um, and let me see, I think that is about it. The only other thing is that, again, you would invoice me um, half of your total payment after you have, um, you project manager and designer would invoice me half of your total payment right after you submit the first home page and sub page to the client. And then again, after the site is launched. And uh, the site will always be launched by me. And, um, and that's just to make sure that everything, they've paid up everything <laughs> before it's actually launched. Okay. All right, so that's about it for me. Does anyone have any questions on the process, Wix, um, anything? I have a okay. question on Wix. Sure. <clears throat> um, sometimes they ask for a lot of animation hmm. and animated text or, um, well, pretty much just animated text. Do these Wix templates do that easily? Yes, yes, they do. Okay. So let me go back and take you to that. Then. I just didn't want to make sure that that was a lot of extra work. You know, oh, yeah. No, that. that's that's pretty simple. Um, that's as, oh, whoops, that's, well, that's why I can't edit it. Okay, but yeah, that's as simple as clicking on the text and choosing the option to animate. And it's, okay. it pretty much works just like a PowerPoint from that way, from great. that point on. Great. Mm -hmm. Okay, great question. I have a question. In terms of revisions, like what happens if that you've handed in their first revision and they do come back 24 hours with a couple more? 
a hard this is the second revision or is it on a case-by-case -case basis or is it there a little leeway there um i would say maybe as long as the designer hasn't started it you could you could go for that the the biggest thing is really just to make sure that they know okay give this to me when it's complete take your time you know to give me all the changes that you want and you can encourage them if they have other stakeholders that are concerned with what the website looks like and everything you can tell them take your time to show it to people you know and and get a compiled list of feedback um, and just say you know because this will count as one round i think it is up to your discretion i would say after 24 hours if it isn't just next day type of thing and it isn't just one thing then maybe it should count as a second round okay that makes sense Kristen, I had a quick comment. Um, you right now mentioned that if it, in case like some of the clients had um, like for example users that, that might use it that they could share that to them. Am I correct that you said that? Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Do you think it would be possible for us to maybe ask us the designers to ask the client to um, we could have access to those users so that we could perhaps interact with them and show that to them because then it would be a way more direct way for us to, to see the feedback you know because um, the clients might think that the that the users want something, but that might not really be what they want. If you get what I'm saying, like, maybe oh, like, I see what you mean. Yeah, so that we can directly see how people are, are giving feedback about like usability testing. Basically, that's what I'm getting at. You know, mm, mm. Like, My, I don't know how much that factors in because I know we're trying to keep costs low, so that that's you know. Yeah, my um, I definitely see where you're coming from, and you know, especially as a. As a human factors person, I'm definitely obsessed with user feedback and testing. Mm -hmm. um, I only worry about it getting very muddy in terms of communication. Mm -hmm. So my main goal is to keep all communication between the project manager and the client. Mm -hmm. And that way, designers, you can really focus on just doing the design. So I would say um, project managers, you can always encourage the client to you know, listen to their customers, go and ask for feedback for people. You can even ask them in the kickoff meeting, you know, do you have an idea of what is important to your customers, what's important to the people coming to your website, and then that can be reflected in the website itself. You know, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Okay, all right, good. Um, Kristen? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Just the project manager, or is the project manager and the designer, and then is all feedback going to be paper feedback? So there will be no like video conference meetings moving forward for feedback. Right. So um, the kickoff meeting, yes, is between the project manager and the uh, and the client. Okay. So I mean, you can you can participate if you want to, but it definitely has been. Uh, historically between the, the project manager and the, the client. And that's just so, again, you can kind of focus on the design and there won't be too many cooks in the kitchen. Yeah, but it, it's up to you. If you feel really strongly about attending, you can talk to the project manager. Um, and in terms of uh, just the meetings, how they go, for tier one and tier two, both tiers have a phone kickoff meeting regardless so it can be phone or it can be video depending on what the client wants but it'll be no more than 30 minutes so about 30 minutes um, and then anything after that so for revisions a tier one customer they will um, give you feedback just with the change request form um, so that will be given um, given to the client by the project manager and then the project manager like Martha was saying can upload it to Asana um, for a tier two client, however, they have the option to opt for, say, you give revision or say you give them the first, uh, the ver first version of the home page and sub page. They have the option to do a 30 minute phone call or online meeting to review the design and kind of give you feedback there as well as doing the form. <clears throat> And, and the reason why I say as well as doing the form is because I know that in the past, clients will go through the website, they'll say, oh, actually, can you change this? Can you change that? 
but then later on they have more things after they look at it again by themselves. So you can always say project managers, okay, I got these changes and I'll put them in the project, the, the re change request form for you to complete later. Does that make sense? Yeah. And then for the deadlines are on Asana, are those going to be when things will be due for the client or when things are due for the project manager? Or is that up to each project manager to decide how to set those deadlines? So like we know when it's due to the project manager first and then when the deadline is actually going, like when the project's going to the client. Right, good job. Um, so on Asana, there are tasks that are um, kind of specified to be either for the uh, delivered to the client or delivered to the project manager. So let me go back to Asana really quick. Yeah, so design subpage and home uh, and and home page, and then review for changes. Those are things that are, that are due to the project manager. Oh, see okay. what I mean? So instead of it just being design homepage and submit, you have that extra step of review. Cool. So that would be send it to the, the project manager. And it's, it's up to the project manager to um, put in there the, the um, deadlines for each thing. But rule of thumb would be for each item that you get back or each task that you first start, I would say try to do it within, try to turn it around within three days, three business days. So for designing the home page and one sub page template, because you're working from a Wix template anyway and you're kind of just customizing and adding content, I try to get it back to the um, project manager in three days. And then that way it's given to the client within a week. Yeah, does that make sense? Yeah, yeah sounds good. <laughs> I am using my voice, but okay. All right. Um, any other questions about anything? Nope, not now. Okay. All right. Awesome. Okay. Anybody? Anybody else about? Uh, bah, 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 let me see if there's anything else that I feel like I should. Um, like I said, I will um, be giving everyone access to the to the drive, and in that it'll have different email templates um, for the project managers to send out to clients. It'll have account passwords, so when you are ready to create a Wix website, you can go and see what the password is for that. You can go and see what the password is for the um, information is for. Uh, the online meetings or the phone phone line the conference line uh, so all of that will be there I'll give everyone access and um, yeah anything else you guys need from me not at the moment we'll do it, I think. I yeah I think we'll, we'll jump in and start working this way and you know questions might pop up then but for now it seems good oh. all right Sorry, I have a question. Oh, sure. We're kind of in the middle of things right now. I don't, I'm not sure if the projects I was working on got closed. When they just take it back to the next project, they're like kind of right now. Oh, oh, right. What, you're on which one? I was on uh, CFCC, and I know the client was a little bit iffy on getting back, so I, that's been a while. I haven't heard from them. And then the other one was the gardening, the Cooper Center. Right. Okay. Um... Martha, was there any update? I know I spoke to McDonald and he said he would pretty much just pay the uh, the remaining balance because they're crazy busy. Right. Um, <laughs> so I'll get back to him, probably just shoot him an invoice and then both of you can get at least paid for that. Um, and then I'm not sure what he wants to do about launching that. So okay. you might want to follow up with him on that, but I'll shoot him an invoice. I'll follow up too. I've been following up with Ebony, who he handed it over to a couple of weeks ago to finish. Okay. And she, is, I've had trouble getting um, in touch with her. Oh, okay. All right. Well, that is good to know. I'll figure that one out. And um, for Cooper Center, I haven't heard back from them, Bree. So I will um, follow up with them and see what their feedback was. But in terms of process, every website from here on out should kind of follow this process of you make a sub page, 
and you kind of carry that subpage throughout. So that goes for Cooper Center, that would go for um, Baraka Wellness, Heather, too. I know Raheem's kind of um, very, very specific about what he wants, but the more we can push, all right, we're trying to make a consistent look and feel throughout the websites by having um, very similar looking subpages, that'll be a really good thing to do. I'm a little nervous for that one because the style is so specific towards the content that's on it. Mm -hmm. I feel like we need a more generic page for the other pages. So, mm -hmm. I guess okay. Come, so. Yeah, I definitely see what you're saying. Well, maybe this next uh, set of pages that you make can follow that. And it'll just be similar in some way to what you already have for the programs page. But, you know, you can, you can carry on this new template throughout. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and there was something else I had to say. Oh, one other thing was just that, so now that we have a good number of uh, project managers as well, um, I definitely want to just have maybe a 15 minute um, meeting, 15 to 30 minute meeting just once a week, just to catch up with you all and see how everything's going and if you need anything from me. So I'll reach out to you, um, Cecilia, Natalia, Martha, to schedule, see what time is good for just a weekly, just uh, stand up. Yeah, great. Okay, all right, awesome. All right, um, and I've said this was over, but I'm, I'm so, just, let me just make sure <laughs> uh, that there was nothing else. And let me stop sharing so I can actually see you. Um, there we go. Okay, beautiful, beautiful. You all look beautiful. Um, let me see, is there anything else? I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, I think that is about it. I know, Natalia, you're on a new project right now. Martha, you are you have a bunch. Cecilia, I have one new project that I would love for you to work on. So I'll follow up with you after this um, to give you the details. Okay. Awesome. All right, great team. Awesome. You guys are amazing. Thank you so much for being amazing. And um, as always, link up with me if you need anything, and I'll be in touch. Thanks, Kristen. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Good meeting, everyone. Yeah. Bye. Good meeting.